my very first video where I am speaking the human language without a silent short film like the other two or three videos that I've made. If you are interested in seeing me paint a very simple landscape, I did it, it was under 30 minutes and it was like real quick and I'm trying to practice doing stuff a lot more like creative instead of getting really fine tuned with some stuff like which I'm I tend to do a lot so I'm trying to chillax a little bit so if you want to watch me make this in real time or am I going to speed it up who knows I haven't even done the editing and that's not the super fun part the more the fun part is actually the painting so this is an oil so let's take it away how how am I doing this is there a transition right here that's happening I don't know so let's just let's stop rambling because I can ramble all day so let's get to painting so I went to Guadalupe River State Park a, about a week ago and they have the most beautiful views so that is going to be the reference photo that I use I'm using this gesso to prime my canvas and I'm just using one of those canvas panels an 8x10 and you can actually use this it says for acrylics but I googled it and Google will not lie to you as I I, I hope not but you can use it as a, a gesso for oil paints too so we're gonna get that pesky little top off and we're going to wipe it off on my little beautiful orange towel. I love the color orange. It's just so happy and sunshine-like. And I have a little, one of those, what are those Q yogurt things? I love, I don't know what they're, how to even pronounce it. But I'm just basically, I love to save those because they're just, they make the perfect little containers to, to dilute paint in or just put all your little art knickknacks. So I'm just adding some water to it because you don't want to use it straight out of the tube because it's way too thick and then it's going to be streaky and icky. And then also I want to wipe off any kind of debris. We have been having all of this kind of pollen stuff outside and it has carried itself throughout our house because we like to leave the windows open. So I'm taking that off and I'm doing the gesso layer number one. And this is very exciting part. And I, you know, it's not too exciting. So that's why I, I sped it up here. I mean, we can watch the entire process in real time, but I do not want to bore you to death because I am already bored. So let's get every inch of that done. And I'm and if it gets too thick, just add a little bit more water. So you're going to do this a total of three times. Some people say two times is fine. But honestly, I it's like better to be safe than sorry. And get those pesky little hairs out of that canvas because no one has time for that. Now we're on gesso layer numero dos. I, I'm learning um, Espanol through Rosetta Stone. So... Bear with me. I, I think I'm a professional Spanish speaker at this moment, which I am totally not, but that's okay. You, pro I should probably practice more often so I can actually brag that I know Spanish instead of the basic numbers of 1 through 10. And now we're at the final just so coat. Yay! And give yourself a thumbs up. So now I'm going to be using my beautiful plate of many colors. And I am going to start doing the underpainting. And I just have some like random arts and crafts kind of acrylic paint. So what I do for all my underpaints, I do not waste any oil paint for this process. Because you're just going to cover it up anyway. So I'm just going to create some type of an underpainting color. And I got kind of crazy with this color normally I do kind of I, I'll do like a blue and brown mix like more of a neutral background but I wanted this to be fun and bright you know YOLO and I know um YOLO is so early 2000s but you know I I like to say YOLO so if you have a problem with that then this 
this video will not be the one for you because I will probably say YOLO at, at least another 10 times at minimum. So this one, I'm just watering it down. And it it's, doesn't matter. Just get a yellow, an orange. Let's not be dramatic about it. I can tell you the actual color, but I mean, again, words. Who, who has time for all the words? And another thumbs up. So now I'm just getting some red and I'm going to start labeling or labeling. What, what am I talking about? Okay. I When I start talking, I don't know what I'm saying half the time, but I'm going to start laying down some of the background colors and actually kind of like freehand sketching. So I have my reference photo at the top corner, but I'm using it as a guide. I'm not trying to replicate it in any way. I'm just using it as an inspiration. So you'll see that it's not going to look exactly like that picture because that, that wasn't the point of this painting. It was more of a freehand kind of, again, YOLO <laughs> type painting. And I like that little sunburst. It looks like I have a little tiny star in the middle. A piece of water got on there and I wiped it off and it made a beautiful little star. So there I'm just adding some more of that. Oh, and voila, it is, it is done. So now we're going to get to the fun part. So I have my color palette here. I have basically the the primary colors and I'm using linseed oil as a way to kind of thin out my paints if I need it. I love linseed oil. I'm using right there, I just put some ultramarine blue and I'm going to start the sky. I always like to start from the top down. I don't know. I just, I love the sky and this is the way I do it. Okay. And I also had some cerulean blue that I had at the very top next to the white, but you know what? I wound up not even using it. It just basically just, I would just, just stick with ultramarine blue. You cannot go wrong with it. It is amazing. And you can always lighten it, darken it, make it warmer, make it cooler. Again, let's not be dramatic when it comes to painting. It's about fun time USA. So I'm just dabbling it on top and most of that background will be covered, but I still want to have some of that that yellowy orange to shine through to kind of give it a, a luminescent type feel and look to it. And if you look at the picture, the blue is the blue of the sky, sky is a lot darker in the foreground than it is in the back because of atmosphere. That's <laughs> atmosphere. That's a fancy word. But I'm just going to lighten it up as I get down to the bottom. And I love anything to do with the sky and clouds. I'm going to do another painting tutorial that we, we just do the clouds and the sky primarily because I just, they're so fun. You cannot mess up clouds. You really, you cannot. So just don't overthink it. And I'm just lighting going slow, slowly getting lighter as I get down to the, the foliage part. And I'm going to cover some of that dark, rusty, reddish brown that I made because I want it to look like it's peeping through the trees and the foliage. I, I, I might say foliage way too much. It's just, I, that's how I pronounce it. Cause it's way more fun than foliage, foliage. See now that just doesn't even sound right, but I, I like to add a lot of the blues like covering up that bottom base layer of the trees because you want it to peek through eventually when I cover it with the greens and whatever color I decide to use. It's going to look really, it's going to look a lot more natural. So you don't have like blocks of trees and blocks of bushes happening. So here I am just dabble, dabbling away. Honestly, I would just keep the painting like this and call it a day. But, you know, as a finished product, we, we should actually finish this and stick to the goal of a finished piece. But I kind of like the colors right there. We could call this abstract. So if you if you want to do the same painting and you feel like this is the best place to stop, then you do you, boo. And you could stop wherever you want. Just sign your name on it. And I promise I won't tell anyone. So what I like to do the blues at the top, if I'm using some kind of like a sky blue or any type of, really this goes with any color I use in a painting, I like to add it to the bottoms, like 
different places throughout the painting because it just makes it more cohesive. Another big word. <laughs> Thank you, art school. By the way, I went to art school and I've basically thrown out any type of art language out there and I, I just make up my own, you know. No one has time for fancy art words. So you'll see I just add blues and whatever all over the place. Ooh, now we're getting to the fun cloud town. So here we're adding some whites. At the top, you're going to have the clouds are going to be a lot more white at the top because, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm getting a little dry mouth from all this talking. By the way, this is probably the most talking I will have done the entire day because I pretty much don't like to talk in my daily life, which you probably won't believe that through this video, but this is the most talking that I will be doing in the next couple days. So let's just add some more white and some of the clouds at the top, I'm going to leave a little bit more crisp. So it looks like they're coming at you, you know, make them more realistic. And we're going to speed up this process very soon because watching myself paint for hours is just, it bores me to my gourd. So I'm sure it might bore you as well. If not, that's that's wonderful, but I'm going to speed it up soon. So we're just going to fill it up with all the beautiful cloud whites on there and leave some of that orange peeking through. I think I wind up covering most of that, which was a, a no-no mistake because that wasn't the goal. But, you know, sometimes you can't control it. You get into painting mode and you just lose yourself. I'm a loud um, water drinker, so if you heard me gulp, <laughs> I apologize. Oh, and I got these amazing new brushes. So, by the way, so when I got the gesso, I ran. Okay, not literally ran, but I got in the car and hauled booty to get to Michael's before they closed on Sundays because they close early on Sundays because, duh, right? But... I'm a procrastinator, so I wanted to wait to the very last second, and I got there with five minutes to spare. Thank you. Oh, but what I was saying, those brushes that I'm using right now, I cannot walk into a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby or any type of a craft store without purchasing way more than I need. So, I mean, I technically didn't need new brushes, but do you ever need new brushes? No, you just, you want them and you obviously, you get that card out and you just charge that sucker. I just, I love brushes and new brushes are the best ever. Oh, see, I sped it up and I'm going to kind of blend towards the background because I want it to be a little bit not as crisp in the background, like towards that horizon line. And I'm working at a weird angle. I'm going to figure out a way to film without, because I was working like on an aerial view. I have it on my table working down. But my hand, if you see me holding the brush very strangely and non-organically, it's because I was working at a very strange angle. Normally I work on an easel, but you know, I don't... I'm new I'm new to this recording the art game scene. So, I'm learning as we go. So, what am I even doing here? It looks like I'm going to Oh, I know what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to be adding the foliage again with the foliage word. So, all I do for that, I'm I'm basically creating my own really dark black type color and I use ultramarine blue I have that green and what, what green did I actually use I should I should look that up but anyway I used some type of a cool green I think and then the burnt umber and it makes a really dark shade of green so I'm adding that to you kind of want it almost black because you're adding the dark colors first that's how you work with acrylics and oils you want to start off with your dark colors first and then you work on top especially if you're doing a wet on wet which I'm doing I'm trying not to let it dry 
because normally what I do is I'll do a little bit here, let it dry, add some more layers, but who has time for that? And it's not as fun. And I'm trying to get, break out of that habit of making things very refined and trying to get it as perfect as I can because that's not fun and art should be fun and I need to constantly school myself on that. So now we're getting into more mid-tones here. Add some more of that yummy yellow. Yummy yellow is also known as cadmium yellow. Is that the one I used? Yes. Just get yourself a yellow. Just again, I think a lot of videos we they overdo it with this is the yellow you use. This is use what you got. If you you could do the same thing in acrylic, it it doesn't need to be exactly like mine because that's boring, okay? And I'm kind of thinning it out at the bottom because I'm not really sure where if I wanted that path or not. And you'll see like in the picture there's kind of a little dirt path. I wound up covering it because I got really carried away with the greens and just the nature scene. So I kind of edited myself throughout this thing. And so it was gone towards the end. Bye-bye, little nature path. So I went, so at Guadalupe State Park, it was my very first time doing the actual back trails. And I didn't realize you were in the middle of nowhere. So thankfully I had enough water. Most of the times when I'm out in nature, I'm all, what, water? What is that? Like who even needs it, right? Kids, do not follow in my, my advice. If you are out in nature, please bring a good amount of water. And also do not go at the peak of heat time USA. So I thought it was going early and it was around like 10. By the time I got out of there, it was like, maybe 12, 1230. And I was sizzling to the core and a little sun drunk dehydrated. But you know, that happens sometimes when you lose yourself in nature. But I got so many amazing pictures from that day. And this is just one of them. So I have endless amount of art reference photos that I can possibly desire. But actually, you know, for me, it's you can never have enough art reference photos. So we're adding some dimension by just kind of lightening up the greens. And I want it kind of bright. So I'm not, I'm trying not to add any more, like to make it more neutral. Oh, see, see how I added some greens around the whites and the little blue? Because I want it to look like some of that sky is peeking through. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a stamp. And that's, that's not what I want. I don't want stamp trees out there. I want them to look like they are real and growing straight off the canvas. Oh, and I didn't mention this before. So the reason I, I gessoed my, my canvas, I know they come pre-gessoed, but there is something about if you, I still recommend you putting those, at least the two layer gesso technique because your paints are going to stick to it way better. And it's almost like they say it's pre-gessoed or pre-primed, but it's like this glossy kind of prime. And I don't know. I just, I don't like it. So just, it's best to just gesso the heck out of your canvases. Minimum, I know I said two, minimum two times, but come on guys, let's, let's not be lazy. You're doing it. Just, let's just go for the third time. All right. Just listen to me. Ooh, I like that yellow that I made. It's really fun because I'm doing a voiceover after the fact because I don't like to talk when I paint. I'm, I'm totally into the painting at the time. So it's kind of cool to see the colors that I did create. I'm like, ooh, good job, me. And remember to always compliment yourself throughout the entire process. You know, it's all about self-esteem here when it comes to painting. And I'm bringing that color. So if I'm using that color, greens, I'm going to put it at the bottom too. I don't want it just, again, it will look too much like a stamp. And it won't look as vibrant or alive if you just stick the colors in one spot. Nature has colors that are blended throughout it. Oh, see, now that I look at the path, I should have kept that path, huh? 
But see, that putting that green directly on that path was the first step of losing Mr. Path because then I got really carried away and I, um, I just completely forgot there was a path there. I'll probably do this painting again on a bigger scale and maybe Mr. Path will actually get to see the light of day. Oh, it looks like I'm adding, what did I just add? I, I missed the painting, what I did. Oh, okay, so I'm just adding some more bright, bright, bright leaves. You're giving it dimension. I want it to look like a little bird can come straight out of that tree and smack me in the face, you know? I want it to look not real, but realish. Is that an art term, realish? You know, I'm making, I make my own art terms. So art books, beware of me because I follow no rules when it comes to painting. And I'm adding, I kind of lost some of that, the clouds in some of the trees. So I'm going to go back and add some of the whites through and some of the really light, light blues to break up some of the, the trees. And see what I'm talking about? I got... A little carried away and I lost some of the orange and by some pretty much all of it in the sky and I should have next time I will leave some of that background the underpainting shining through because it really just makes it look so much more I would say beautiful and fun to look at and that's how I judge my paintings they need to be fun to look at My art professors are probably um, shivering to their, their core right now. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, this was the beginning of Mr. Path and trying to create some colors for him, the base colors. But yeah, he, he pretty much disappears towards the end of this video. Sorry, Mr. Path. And what's going to happen, I, I, because of the, the angle that I was working at, um, there's going to be a lot of horizontal paint strokes. Normally, I would, I would kind of mix the paint strokes around so it's not so much, yeah, like the left to right. But I was at a very strange and awkward angle. Again, very new to the art scene YouTube game. But I will learn because it's all about learning, right? You can never learn enough. Can we give a round, a round of applause to the teachers out there? Yay! You do not get paid enough. Fun fact, I was a middle school art teacher for four years. You, you don't see this, but I am shivering to my core right now after saying that. It was fun teaching the kids, but also... Um, very stressful <laughs> as well, but it was a great experience doing it. See, I, I like to leave off on a positive note. So I, I don't want to think of all the stress that was involved. I want to think of the fun times that I did have with the kids that actually loved art because there were a lot of those kind of kids. But man, those kids are probably already grown and have kids of their own by now. It's so weird. I feel like I, I kind of halted the aging process I just refused to be a grown-up but everyone else around me seems to be growing up and I, I don't get it like how are they growing up and I am not it just it doesn't make any sense physics does not apply to me oh see look you're gonna see oh see oh Mr. Path is slowly being covered R.I.P. Mr. Path you were a good old boy. But we had no need for you in this freestyle painting. Oh, and I'm using mineral spirits. I didn't I didn't mention that. That see that icky gray sludge water at the top right corner of the screen? That would be mineral spirits, and you're gonna need that for oil painting. 
I'm adding some grays because I want the, the clouds to kind of have like a shadow underneath them. Because if you really look at a cloud, they're not just white blobs in the sky. They actually have a little life of their own. They have shadows too, just like us. Did y'all ever do that as kids? And, and by kids, I mean grown-ups too. Just stare at the sky and the clouds and make up little things that you see. I swear, every single time I look at a cloud, I see a duck or some type of a bird animal. I love birds. Speaking of birds, I have the most beautiful bird feature that we got at Lowe's about a couple weeks ago, but those squirrels, okay. I had a t I really had to have a talking with these squirrels because they are very disrespectful. Like I told them they can have all the seeds they want, but they cannot be greedy. So what happened was, this is a, this seems like to be a common story when it comes to squirrel behavior. The bird feeder is so beautiful in the trees. I, I visioned myself having coffee and, and seeing all the birds and maybe occasional squirrel here and there. I mean, all critters. I love all critters equally. But what they do is they will jump on said bird feeder, completely wreck it. The seeds are all over the floor. And then so what I did, I was like, okay, so maybe bird feeder wasn't wasn't that great. So I got... Another one that my sister gave me, like a, a little planter type thing to put them on top of the railing. Very heavy, which I thought. So I was like, okay, let me put them for Mr. Squirrels and the birds so at least they won't wreck it. No, so Mr. Squirrels, as soon as the seeds would run out, so they would obviously, duh, right, eat all the seeds and not leave one, one seed for any other critter in the forest land. What they do is when they were done, they just knock that sucker straight on the floor. And we live on a deck, so there's a woods under us. So I would have to go. I did this three times to where I was like, enough is enough. They would knock it down when it was done as their way to say, hello, lady, we're, we're hungry. We did not fill our cheeks enough with seeds that you've been providing on the hour, every hour of the day to to satisfy their, their craving, they really have a problem. You know, they really do. So I just stopped doing that. But And I, I refused to put up the seeds for a while until a couple days ago, Mr. Bird Feeder is back up because I will never learn my lesson when it comes to nature. I love them. I love the critters and I love squirrels, but Someone has got to tell these squirrels that their behavior is just, it's not acceptable at all. And look at Mr. Painting is coming together. You see Mr. Path? I don't either. He's gone. Bye. And I'm adding some more dark, dark blues to the top because I want some of those, um, I already forgot what they're called, clouds to kind of jump out at you. I want those clouds to look like they can smack you in the face too, just like my vision of the birds coming through the foliage. And this is not sped up. This is me on coffee. JK kids, JK. I try to be cool and say JK, but I don't think the kids say JK. I think you're only supposed to do that in text form. So it looks like we're wrapping up this painting. This has been quite a doozy. Oh, by reference photo. Oh, oh, and do your voila. The final painting is complete. Ta-da! Yay me! Well, I hope you liked that art video, Mia. What do you think? You want to say hi to all your, you're probably going to have so many art fans. Mia is very popular with everyone, right? And she cannot wait to be part of the art community. Yay! I need to do a pup portrait of her very soon. By the way, 
it's I'm in Texas right now and it is hotter than hell out there but that's okay I went for a little walk thinking that that would be a great idea at you know like 2 30 in the afternoon um feeling a little bit dehydrated so we're gonna drink lots of water right Mia yes mom Mm. All right, see you guys next time for, we'll see what kind of video we do. We're just kind of doing our own thing on this channel, but it's art, art, art all day long. Right, Mia? Yes. Okay, bye guys. I will see you soon.